Okay, this week we're going to start off with The Mysteries of the Relative Pyramid, Reality Benders, book number nine, written by Michael Antimanoff. Uh, it is 495 pages. It is $6.99. It's not available on Kindle Unlimited. Here is the author's description. Nat the Devourer is becoming a more prominent figure in grand space politics. Sure, he may not be totally independent yet, but he is enough leeway to be able to differentiate Earth's interests from those of its gecko citizens and act exclusively for the good of his own kind. Nat must balance obligations to his almighty citizens against a desire to advance humanity's position in space, in space and his home planet's search for the ever more allies. Although Earth's masters are not big fans of his independent ways, the Great War has shifted the historical balance of forces, and the Gecko are no longer as powerful as they once were, leaving them to do with no choice but to abide the Kung of Earth's antics. So, will Earth be able to take this chance and free itself from alien control completely? And if so, is it even a good idea? And that means one of the human leaders will have to back down. Okay, that's sort of a weak... <laughs> description it, it really i mean it, it it does have some of the ideas but it, it at least a, a little like okay that's that's a, that's a statement now we'll say what you're going to do here um full disclosure i received advanced copy for review i purchased the copy when it became available um this is a fun series it really is um, i i've never been disappointed with anything in the reality bender series i'm probably going to say i still enjoy some of the first books a little bit more but this has still been a, a very nicely told stories. It, it is very slice of life, and that the main character at this point is is, is running a space hopper kind of story where um, everything's happening in space. He's he's always away from Earth. He very rarely even gets out of his capsule, which puts him back in, in a normal space and not in the game that alters reality. Um, and so it really just feels a lot like a space opera. The main character and a ship go to different places. They, they fight in these huge, big, epic space battles in the, in the novel. Um, and they have these um, bit of intrigue between these different factions um, and trying to decide where he wants to invest his time and energy to further humanity's ability to survive in this like ever complex and ever aggressive universe and against these alien forces. Um, and so again, it, it feels very space opera, but again, there's still the same level for better or worse of, of the RPG progression from the last few books. And the main character, when he does stuff, he gets notifications, he gets level increases, he gets stat skills. Um, and you know, so they, all that exists as notifications um, in, in the story. So, so, so there is still some RPG progression. I mean, it's not something that necessarily, um, is, is a main focus of the story. Like it was in the, like the first few books in the novel, him focusing on leveling up and figuring out the rules of the game. At this point in the story, he's, he's already advanced his class and his position within this, uh, hierarchy of, of, of Kung's and whatever other <laughs> titles they do for, for people who, who have influence within their universe and they get their game universe. Um, and it's just, you know, it's fun in its own way, you, but at this point you would have had to have read all the other books to really appreciate these things. So, um, for me, as I was reading, I found like some of the best scenes for me weren't necessarily the space battles, which are really good. It's just some of the smaller scenes, the smaller interactions with characters that I've already come to really enjoy and seeing how they come together. I was like, oh, some of those like really small scenes, like, uh, they're really just like a couple of like, they're just like really well run. Like, oh, this is... I want you to be happy. And that's always a good sign. It's always like you being engaged with the story and the characters. Um, one of the only th probably negative things I could say is like, oh, there's there's a, towards the end, there's this uh, betrayal that felt a little, you know, forced and not particularly impactful. Um, but other than that, not everything in the story is really entertaining. So for me, uh, gets a score of 7.7 .7 out of 10. I read this thing in like, in like two sittings. I've always enjoyed it. So it's always going to get a nice, good review for me. It's better than average. So like nice, uh, like really good, entertaining story. But of course, if you're this deep into the, this series, you probably already know that. So that's the Mysteries of the Relic Pyramid, Reality Benders, book number nine, uh, with a score of 7.7 .7 out of 10.